Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Alhamdulillah, we have an exciting new session. Uh, and without further ado, we'll begin. I would like to uh, introduce our, um, our first speaker, Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan, who currently serves as the chairman of the Iqna Sharia Council. He's also a member of the Fifth Council of North America, a graduate of the Islamic University in Medina uh, in the faculty of Sharia. And he was formerly an imam and resident scholar in Chicago and currently resides in North Carolina. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi amma ba'd. Uh, dear viewers, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So here we are virtually in a convention setting that we call symposium. Uh, so it is much easier this way on one hand and not so easy on the other hand. But let us go through our discussion. And today is uh, my, my talk. And it's not quite a talk. Um, it's not a lecture, so to speak, in as much as it is a life journey for each and every one of us. This is more personal. Personal in the sense that what each and every one of us should be doing if we want to have that journey to O oh, content soul. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'idna. And how beautiful it is to hear at the end of this journey that we are being called out. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'idna. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan marudiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. O you content soul, O you happy soul, come back to your Lord, well pleased and well pleasing unto him. Enter you among my honored servants and enter you my Jannah, my paradise. Beautiful, beautiful, subhanAllah. So this is this is more like, what can we do? How do we get there? And this is the few minutes that I have that we are going to go through some thought process. How do we get to that point? So I want you to take note. And each one of us, is each one of the points are very brief. And I want you to, maybe if you have a piece of paper, write some of the keywords that you would learn from this. And one of the first quality is Tawheed in Allah or the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the foundation of the soul. It is the purpose for which we are created. In fact, it is the purpose for which, which everything has been created, upon which we live and upon which we die. And definitely um, this last part here, dying on Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of the importance of this Tawheed or belief in the oneness of Allah, every time he sent one of his uh, companions to go to places, he will always tell them that the first thing you need to do is to teach people Tawheed as he did with Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu an. When he sent him to Yemen, he said, إِنَّكَ تَقْدَمُ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ that you are going to a people among the people of the book. So let the first thing that you call them be belief in Allah alone. This is, this is a challenge because we also are living here in a society that we need to call people to or to talk to them about one God. And oftentimes we assume that we know Tawheed. Oftentimes we think we know. But the question is, why did Prophet ﷺ spend 13 years of his dawah focusing on Tawheed, particularly in the Makkan period? So we need to ask ourselves that question and spend some time in understanding Tawheed of Allah. The second quality that we should all possess, and especially now than ever before, is dua. Dua is another quality to achieving a content soul. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Laysa shay'un akrama ala Allahi minad dua. 
there is nothing dearer to Allah than dua. And this hadith is reported by Tirmizi and it is graded as Sahih. So what does dua mean to us? When we make dua, what does it say? We acknowledge the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over everything and his independence over everything that exists. We acknowledge that. We believe that when we make dua to Allah. It brings out our weaknesses and our inabilities. And especially at this time when subhanallah, this invisible virus has stopped all of us, the whole world. How much more should we not be dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dua? So dua is the strength of the believer. And we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as the most powerful. So we go back to Allah. Allah wants us to go back to him. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and your Lord call, says, call upon me. I will respond to you. Subhanallah. This all-powerful being that controls everything that is in this universe, he is saying, Ud'uni, make dua to me, I will respond to you. Indeed, those who disdain my worship, those who turn away and become arrogant of my worship will enter hell. Disgraceful, may Allah save us from that. And that's why Umar ibn Khattab used to say, Inni la ahmilu hammal ijaba walakin hammad dua. Fa idha alhamtu ad dua fa inna al ijaba ma'ahu. That I do not focus so much on the response. Because remember Allah says, Udu'uni astajib lakum. I do not focus on the response to my dua, but I focus in the dua itself. So when I focus on my dua, certainly the ijaba comes from Allah. The response comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, don't just think that, oh, I'm making dua, making dua, I want to see the answer. Focus on making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third quality is the Quran. And there is no purification. There is no going to this journey because this Quran is, is taking us to that journey without attachment to the Quran. Quran is the guide to that destination as Allah SWT says. فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَى يَفَلَا يَذِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Then whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray in this world nor suffer in the hereafter. And so we must not see this Quran as a burden. Sometimes we take this Quran as too much of laws and too much of uh, uh, weight on our shoulder. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same surah, Taha, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'ana li tashqa illa tathkiratan li mayyakhsha. That Taha, we have not sent down the Quran unto you to cause a distress, but a reminder, a reminder for one who have uh, khushu in his heart, for one who has that uh, uh, humbleness and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth quality is the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we talk about, so far we talk about what? We talk about number one, tawheed, number two, dua, number three, Quran, number four, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they're not difficult to under, to remember, okay? They're not difficult to remember. So he, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, is the guide. Uh, sorry, he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the guide showing us the straight path. How to reach that content soul. Because we live in a world today, this internet is kila waqal. He said and she said. And so sometimes we get confused as to where to go and we are bombarded with people when in fact it should be our deen is obedience to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this Allah has made very, very clear in Al-Quran. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed. There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah 
an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah on the last day and who remembers Allah much. So it is not about other people. It is about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His guide, his guidance, his way, his path is really what we have to follow. And so Ibn Qayyim, he talks about, you know, if you want to do things your way, you are kalmarid, alladhi yu'aliju nafsahu bi ra'ihi wa ayna yaqa'u ra'yahu min ma'rifat al-tabib. Like a sick person who wants to cure himself, he has no knowledge, but he wants to do that by his own opinion. So where is his opinion compared to the knowledge of the one who is learned like the doctor? So he give that similitude. Then he added, the messengers are the doctors of the hearts. Thus, there is no purification and rectification of the heart except through the prophets. And for us, it is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fifth quality in order to get to that point is cleansing from impurities. And so Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in this hadith, uh, I have 15 minutes so I cannot go through all this uh, wording, but it's basically that when you do a sin, a black spot comes into your heart. And uh, to the point where if we do not do repentance, it takes over the heart. So it is the covering that Allah has mentioned. No, rather a covering. It is over their heart that they have earned or a rust that has come over their heart when we do impurities, things that are wrong. So no growth can take place while there are these dark spots building up on the heart. And if we want to pour, for example, clean water into a vessel that is dirty, the first thing we do is to clean that vessel. So this heart needs to be cleansed. And uh, brothers and sisters, we are at home. How do we clean that black spots that in our hearts? Or do we add more by the things that we are engaging with as we are at home with this computer, the internet, social media? We need to ask ourselves, are we cleansing those impurities or are we adding more black spots to the heart? And this is something as we are at home, we need to take control of our hearts and cleaning it from all the impurities. And hopefully when this all this is over, we become better people. The sixth one is close the doors and windows to evil. That means these days we are locked up at home saving ourselves from the coronavirus but there is another virus we are exposed to the virus of the internet which can eat away the soul a true muslim will have the courage and the iman to close those doors that divert us or slows us down from achieving this ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And similarly, the ayah came for the women as well. Tell the believing men, also tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision. Some of their vision and guard their private parts. So Ibn Hayyan al-Andalusi, one of the scholars of Andalus, he said, he pointed out that lowering the eyes precede guarding the private part because what you see with your eyes is what activates this body. So while we are at home, what is it that we look at? We need to ask or we need to be, this is a time of purification. This is a time of throwing out things that ought not to be there. And I've heard some of our uh, wonderful brothers and sisters talk about that. Seven quality remember death and meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, there is no time uh, more than this time in which we are in, in this country at this time, in this period, in this world, where death is almost like you go to the store and you don't want to stand to the ne next to the uh, a person next to you. And so Allah war warns us, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqullah, wal tanzur nafsu ma qaddamat lighat. O you who believe, fear Allah and let every soul look 
what it has put forth for tomorrow that tomorrow when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said aksiru zikra hazim al yani al maut that remember the destroyer of pleasures and at this point in time we really should spend some time and think that what if death approaches me what if this coronavirus as we are hearing 2000 people a day now that are dying from that subhanallah may allah protect all of us may allah protect this whole nation this whole world from this the the, the consequences of this coronavirus but it is reality one of our great scholars ibrahim Taimi, he was one of the descendants of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. He said, I imagine myself in Jannah, all the beautiful things, that's great. But I also imagine myself sometimes in the fire of hell, burning, burning, burning. And I say to myself, oh soul, what do you want at that point in time? And the soul says to me, all I want is to return into this world and do some more good deeds. So guess what? He tells the soul, Yo, you are now getting that wish in this world right now so go ahead and do your good deeds quality number eight i have two or three more we have 10 qualities so uh, bear with me uh, keep good company because company is what was bir nafsaka ma'alladina yad'una rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashi yuriduna wajhahu wa la ta'du aynaka anhum you know keep yourself with good company and when we are locked up at home who is our company when we are in our room who is our company this is allah knows and so let us not play games with allah here he locks us up for several reasons and so one of the reason is to keep good company and if we have you know i'm sure we can we have good friends that we can call and increase our iman maybe together make some dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if we are going to go into those websites that are not good then that is not a good company number nine is avoid arrogance arrogance prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said La man kana none of you who has the weight of mustard seed of arrogance will enter into jannah because remember arrogance was the was the sin of iblis was the sin of iblis and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us because we live in a time where we like to take praises for everything whether we do something or we don't do something we love the praises and so in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said think not of those who rejoice in what they have done and love to be praised for what they have not done think not of them that they are rescued from the torment and for them is a painful punishment may allah save us from that so let us not get into this habit of doing things for show for people to talk about and each one of these and finally knowledge of the soul we need to know that the soul has different levels and how do we get to this higher level is if we did do all of these things then we know that there is a soul called amara bisu the evil soul we do we want to strike that out nafs lawama is a fluctuating soul you do good some days you do bad some days you do forgiveness and so forth make sure as the scholar said for that soul when the time of death comes it is where it is so if it is high up with good iman that's good if it is low then that's not so good but the nafs mutma'inna that content soul that is full with ibadah dhikr sincerity and these stages they change and so we want to make them to the point where we end up with this yeah to be told that we reach at the end of this journey and to be told yeah that oh you content soul come back to your lord well please and well pleasing unto him enter you then among my honored slaves and enter you into my paradise my dear brothers and sisters these are the things that we want so briefly yeah, these are the you see tawheed dua connect with the quran follow the sunnah cleansing with the from impurities close the door with and windows from evil remember death and meeting with allah keep good company avoid arrogance and knowledge of the soul so you see these words that i highlighted with red 
TDQS, IED, CAS. Well, think about someone who ignores all of that, what I have said. Then we can say he will be the saddest person. So those words make the acronym C, saddest, IQ. So C is for company, S is for uh, sunnah, A is for arrogance and so forth. So you can work that out. Or you can look at it from another direction and say Q and S, that's Quran and Sunnah, acts died. If you cannot reach this point, Quran and Sunnah acts died. So Q and S is all of these acronym, all of these letters form this acronym. Which one of the acronym you like, you take it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. Um, those are the most uh, interesting uh, acronyms I've seen. So Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we can remember those. If we can remember COVID-19, then we can remember QNS. <laughs> so, <laughs> QNS so, has died. <laughs> uh, QNS has died. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair for uh, sharing those 10 points about how to become that content soul, al nafsul mutmainna whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the paradise. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our shaykh, to bless their families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless this uh, this effort that we have and to bless all of us in this uh, in this quarantine. I would also like to make an appeal, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, you know, you, you've heard this throughout the day. Uh, please go to icna.org slash donate. There's going to be some more information about the work that ICNA is doing. And as our, as our teachers mentioned, that this is a time where we can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while we're locked up in quarantine, it might, feel, it might seem like there's not much we can do to serve Allah. We can sit and we can talk with Allah. We can pray tahajjud, we can read Quran, we can make dua, we can fast. But we might still seem like there's not much we're doing for the world. At that point, it's an opportunity for us to take whatever resources Allah has given us and to share that with others. Uh, and that's the, the one of the works that ICNA is doing uh, across education, across relief, across charity, across da'wah, that we're spreading the message of Islam. So icna.org slash donate. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.